In our last video, we began to talk about the issue of prayer. And so this week, we're going to continue that and finish this conversation about prayer. Now, in the big picture, I want to remind you that we're going through a, a manual called Basic Training. If you would like one of those manuals, if you will email me at bradsmall at embarkmen.com, I will mail you out one of these uh, manuals so that you can go through uh, these videos with the manual and write in the notes you need for your own uh, personal benefit. So we are in the middle of chapter five in that manual. We're talking about prayer. And what I want to do today is answer some of the questions that people have uh, about prayer. So I want to begin um, by telling you that most of what Jesus says about prayer, and He talks a lot about prayer in the Gospels, but most of it comes in the area of stories. He tells stories or parables about prayer, uh, about persistence, about boldness, about faith in prayer. And so those are the things we're going to be talking about today. So one of the questions that people will ask me is, what about boldness in prayer? Do I have the right to just tell God what I want? How, how does that work? And so I, I want to remind you of what we talked about last week uh, in the video, and then I'll, I'll pick up and answer that question. We talked about uh, the, the controlling word picture God has for us when it comes to prayer is that He's the Father and we're little children. So we're like three or four year olds. And part of the reason that we don't always get our prayers answered is we're asking for things like three and four year olds ask to where we're asking for what we want, but not what's best for us. And God tells us no because He knows what's best for us. So just thinking about that and keeping that in the background of our minds, uh, we're going to answer some of these questions. The first one being, how bold can I be? Well, here's how Jesus answers that question in Luke chapter 11, beginning in verse 5. Jesus said to them, suppose you have a friend and you go to him at midnight and say, friend, lend me three loaves of bread. A friend of mine on a journey has come to me and I have no food to offer him. And suppose the one inside answers, don't bother me. The door is already locked and my children and I are in bed. I can't get up and give you anything. I tell you the truth, even though he will not get up and give you the bread of his friendship because of friendship, yet because of your shameless audacity, or another version says boldness, he will surely get up and give you as much as you need. So I say to you, ask and it will be given to you. Seek and you will find. Knock and the door will be opened to you. For everyone who asks receives and everyone who seeks finds. And to the one who knocks the door will be opened. So his disciples were asking him the same question we asked. Lord, is it rude if I'm bold? Can I come before you and just tell you what I want? Do I, you know, how, how do I do that? And Jesus says, let me tell you a story. And then, of course, he paints a story, a picture uh, in his culture. And so I want to explain a little bit of that to you and then, and then I'll answer the question. In those days, it was very typical and expected that you would house people who came by and knocked on your door. They didn't have hotels and motels the way we do today. And so if, if my wife and I were going to take a journey and, and we were going to go from here to another city, when we got to that other city, we would find Christian friends or some friends and we would knock on their door and it would just be expected that they would have us in and they would uh, give us a place to stay and huge in that culture, give us something to eat. And so Jesus is telling this story. He's saying, you know what culture's like. You know that it's expected. Well, this guy has some friends come by and knock on their door, his door at night, late at night and come in and he's expected culturally to feed his friends, but he has no food. And it's midnight, it's in the middle of the night. And so he goes to his next door neighbor, knocks on the door, and the next door neighbor says, what are you doing? It's midnight, I'm in bed with my kids. Why in the world are you coming to me and asking me for bread at this hour? And Jesus says, not because of his friendship with the guy, but because of the bold the boldness or the audacity of him to ask that question at midnight of his friend. He says basically the friend is going to open the door, give him what he needs, and shut the door and go back to bed. He says that's the story I want to tell you when it comes to how bold you can be before God. I want you to focus on that word boldness uh, in verse 8 or as my version says, shameless audacity. What does God want from us in prayer? Does he want me to try to manipulate him or maybe uh, make a deal with him? You know, God, if you'll do A, I'll do B. 
We, we try to bargain with God in prayer. God says, I don't want you bargaining with me. I don't want you trying to manipulate me. Here's what I want. I want you to tell me what you want. Shameless audacity. Let's go back to our word picture of a three or four year old. I have a, I have a, a grandson right now that's four years old. And let me tell you something. He is shameless as to what he wants. When we go somewhere, I'm called Pop. He'll say, Pop, I want that. Pop, take me here. Pop, I want to do this. He's not trying to figure out what kind of flowery words he can give to me or something he can offer me so that I'll answer his request. He just says, Pop, this is what I want. And you know what Pop does? Unless it's going to hurt him, I give him what he wants. I give him what he asks for. And God says, that's me. I want to say yes to you. When I say no to you, it's probably because it's not in your best interest and you're just naive enough or immature enough, you're not asking for what's best for you. But here's what I want out of prayer with you. I want you coming to me with shameless audacity and just tell me what you want. And so that's what Jesus says about boldness when it comes to prayer. Now, what about this whole idea of just, does God get tired of my prayers when I pray over and over and over and over again? Once again, when it comes to that, we're going to call it pers persistence in prayer. Uh, he tells another story. And interestingly enough, it's in the Gospel of Luke again. And it is uh, Luke 18, 1 through 8. Then Jesus told His disciples a parable to show them that they should always pray and never give up. Well, that should give us a clue right there as to what God expects for us in our prayer life when it comes to does he get tired of listening to me when I pray? What if I come to him over and over with the same old stuff? He's saying, I want you to always pray and never give up. And here's the story he tells. He says, in a certain town there was a judge who was neither feared God nor cared about people. And there was a widow in that town who kept coming to him with a plea, grant me justice against my adversary. And for some time he refused, but finally he said to himself, even though I don't fear God or care about people, yet because this widow keeps bothering me, I will see that she gets justice so that she won't eventually come and wear me out. And the Lord said, listen to what the unjust judge says. And will not God bring about justice for his chosen ones who cry out to him day and night? Will he keep putting them off? I tell you, he will see that they get justice and quickly. However, when the Son of Man comes, will he find faith on the earth? So this is the second story that I want to I want to talk about in this video when it comes to prayer. Can I just what if I'm praying for the same thing for five years every day? Does that just wear God out? And Jesus says us in this story, absolutely not. That's what God wants. And he tells this really humorous story. The, the, the justice system back then was kind of a payola system. The judge was paid off by the person with the most money, and whoever had the most money got the judgment in their favor. And in that culture, there was no one lower on the social pecking order than a widowed woman. She had no rights in that culture as a woman. And she had no one uh, to, to be her advocate because her husband was dead. And so literally, she probably has no money. She has no social status. She has no way to bribe the judge to ever get a verdict in her favor. And yet something has come up where she's coming before the judge, and, and the judge is probably going to rule in the favor of her adversary because she has nothing to give him, nothing to bribe him with, except her persistence. And so I can just imagine this scene. I, 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 of course, I think about it in American terms, American justice system. But I think about the judge coming to his office every day. And every day, sitting out front of his office is this woman in a chair. And when he gets there, he's, God says, Jesus says very plainly there, he doesn't care about God, he doesn't care about people, he's just in it for the money. But she keeps bugging him and bugging him every day. Judge, I need you to grant me uh, this, this lawsuit, I need you to grant in my favor. It needs to come in my favor. And she comes to him day after day after day after day, and finally he gives up and says, you know what? You are driving me crazy. If you promise me you'll never show up at my office again, I will judge in your favor. Because she drove him crazy with her persistence. And Jesus says, that's really kind of what God wants out of your prayer life. 
If you have something on your heart and it means something to you, He wants you to come to Him over and over and over again. And Jesus says here, if the unjudged judge will give to the widow what she wants, how much more will the Father in heaven give you what you're asking for? And so there's this idea of persistence in prayer where He wants me to come over and over again to Him. He doesn't get tired of hearing it. Sometimes I wonder, and I'm just wondering this out loud, if He doesn't allow us to do that, to see how bad we want it. To see how much we're willing to give and sacrifice and pray and cry. How, how important is this to us? I wonder if God doesn't do that. But God says, I will always bring justice on your behalf. And then He says this phrase though, but will He find faith on the earth? And that's the third question I really want to uh, answer today. People ask me all the time, well, how much faith do I have to have? Or they'll say to me, well, my prayers weren't answered because I didn't have enough faith. Or what's worse is people, Christians will say to other Christians, well, you just didn't get an answer you wanted because you didn't have enough faith. And so I want to address this whole faith issue in prayer. And this is again what Jesus says in Mark chapter 11, verse 22. He says, have faith in God. Truly, I tell you, if anyone says to this mountain, go throw yourself into the sea and does not doubt in their heart, but believes that what they say will happen, it will be done for them. Therefore, I tell you, whatever you ask for in prayer, believe that you have received it and it will be yours. And so he's talking about God answering prayer and he says there's an element of faith here. And he says if you have faith, God is going to recognize that faith and he is going to... He's going to uh, answer your prayer uh, because you have faith. And so we have a tendency to go, well, my problem is, is I don't have enough faith. That's why God didn't answer my prayer. I want to tell you something. That's not why God didn't answer your prayer. There's another place where Jesus says, if you have faith as small as a mustard seed. Now, a mustard seed is the smallest of all the seeds. It's about the size of a grain of sand. And so here's what I want you to understand about faith. The issue is not how much faith I have. The issue is, in whom am I placing my faith? I can have a whole lot of faith in the wrong things and it's going to do me no good. I can have a whole lot of faith in myself that's not going to get my prayers answered. I can have a mustard seed worth of faith in Jesus Christ and that faith, because it's put in the right place, is going to have great benefits in my life. And so if you're a Christian, God is not answering your prayer the way you won't quote because you don't have enough faith. Because it's not about your amount of faith, it's where you've placed it. Have you placed it in Christ? If you have, that's all that God is asking you to do. Which gets us back to what we talked about last week. Well then why isn't He answering my prayer? Probably because God loves me so much that He knows that what I'm asking for is not in my best interest. And He's always working things out for His glory and my good. And sometimes my good is going through a trial. Sometimes my good isn't what I think it is. But it's not because I don't have faith. It's because God loves me enough that He's got a better plan. And I've got to rest in that. It's interesting what John says in 1 John chapter 5 when he's shutting out this book. He's closing out this book in 1 John chapter 5 and verse 14. He says this, this is the confidence we have in approaching God. He's talking about prayer. This is the confidence we have in approaching God. That if we ask anything according to His will, He hears us. And we know that if He hears us, whatever we ask, we know that we will have what we ask of Him. Did you hear that? Here's what I know. I know that if I'm praying the will of God, He's going to answer that prayer. And so... When I look at prayer, this is, this is what I try to do in my life. I try to be bold and persistent. And so I think I need to be going to God all the time with the things that I want. I need to be constantly asking myself the question though, am I wanting this because I'm selfish or am I wanting this because it's God will? And so I lay it at His feet. But then I've got to release it to Him and trust Him that He's going to do what's best for me. And so God's not being unfaithful to me if He doesn't answer my question, or if He doesn't answer my prayer, or if He doesn't give me what I want. God's not being unfaithful to me. He's being God and taking care of me. 
What I have to realize is when he's not answering my prayer the way I want, he's taking care of me because I don't know what's best for me. That's my problem. The problem is not God. The problem is me. And so I always look to Jesus. I always look to Jesus in the garden the night before he died. And you know what he said to the Lord? He said, Father, I I don't want to die tonight. I don't want to die. If it's your will, would you take this away from me? Did you notice what Jesus did? He said, here's what I want. He was bold about it. Here's what I want. But it's your will, and I want your will to be done. That's our posture in prayer. God, I know I don't know what's best. I know you do, and I know you're going to take care of me. So here's what I want to do. I just want to lay it out. Here it is, plain. I'm not trying to bargain with you. This is what I want. But your will be done. And then I leave it alone and let God do what God's going to do with it, knowing He's always going to do what's best for me. So as we wrap up uh, this chapter on prayer, uh, I just want to talk about I want to bring in what we talked about last week and then what we've talked about this week. And and I just want to give you an acronym that might help you in your prayer life. And it's it's very plain and very simple. It's ACTS, A-C-T-S. When you're praying to God, um, I I think you need to have four areas of of prayer that you're focusing on every day. And this comes right out of the Lord's Prayer in Matthew chapter 6. One is adoration, adoring, praising God for who He is. Our Father who art in heaven, holy is your name right? Adoration. Confession. We always need to be about confession um, in, in our lives. Every day you need to be praying prayers of confession to the Lord. Uh, we'll talk about that more when we get into the next chapter, by the way. Three is thanksgiving. Uh, the more I mature, the more, the more time I spend thanking God for what He's done in my life and the things He's given me, and less about the things that I need and want and desire. Uh, But then there's also this fancy word called supplication where I do give God, here's what I want, here's what I need, here's what I desire. And so what I think you're going to find is, is when you first start a relationship with God, you praise Him a little bit, adoration. You confess some confession. You thank some, but 90% of your prayer is supplication. God, I need this. Would you do this? Please do this. I need this. (laughs) But as you mature, it flip-flops and you get to where you're spending more time praising God, more time confessing your sin because you're so much more aware of your sin, more time thanking God because you can't believe all the things He's doing in your life, and much less time praying to God about the things that you need. And so that will, that, that's kind of a barometer to help you see where you are in your spiritual maturity. So those are some thoughts on prayer that I hope get you started um, as you pursue your prayer life with Jesus Christ. Uh, Let's go ahead and close with a prayer. Father, thank you for our time together on this video. And I I just pray that every person that watches this video, Lord, that they have an aha moment with you, understanding the nature of prayer and what you want to do for them and in them. In Jesus' name, amen. God bless you. Hope you have a great week.